Hello everyone, my name is Jorof Paul and today we'll be looking at Native Instruments brand new Tractor Pro 3. I've been playing for over a decade with Tractor, so I'm really curious to see what this new version has in store for us. So without much further ado, let's dive right in. When we boot Tractor Pro 3, we immediately see its biggest feature, the newly redesigned UI. And I think the UI is great because it allows for much more visibility of all the critical info you need. However, there's also a bit of smaller changes that I think are super valuable. To begin, you can now either enable or disable the limiter from the UI. Which can be useful in situations where you're thinking, hmm, the limiter is not sounding as good as I would want to. Another nice feature is that they've now added a face counter in the uh, link sync area. So Tractor Pro 2 already had the option for syncing with the Ableton Link protocol. However, Tractor works with beat sync, not with face sync, uh, as is common in softwares like Ableton or even Machine 2. So they've now finally added this tiny stripe down below to indicate where the master clock of Ableton Link is actually synced, which is super useful if you're adding stuff like the machine controller or maybe Ableton in the background. Um, so you always know that the first count on your track in Tractor is the same as the first count in your other software. One of the other big new features in Tractor Pro 3, which you can already see in the UI, is the new mixer effect. And anyone who's been playing before with a Pioneer DJM mixer knows how this works. Instead of just working as a filter, it's either high pass or low pass, there's now actually four different effects that you can utilize right from the mixer without having to use the uh, effects units in Tractor. So they're positioned right here, or if you're using the full mixer mode, they're positioned right here. And what these basically allow you to do is just use one knob which combines a filter with an effect. And the four different effects that we have are obviously the regular filter, the reverb, the dual delay, the noise and the time gator. Again, this is also very similar to how the DJM effects work on the mixer. So let's dive right into the effects. I'm playing on deck A and C which are on channel 1 and 3 of my mixer and are on the left hand side of the screen. Let's first try out the reverb on deck 1. So I've mapped the value of the effect to this knob and the on and off to this button. So let's see what happens. Let's just listen to this track on solo for a bit. As you can hear, it's high passing the track and adding a reverb at the same time. Or we low pass it to really give that that dark vibe. Now this was just an easy example, but if we combine multiple effects on multiple channels at the same time, we can really get something interesting. So as you may have noticed, I was using the delay on the third channel. Which again high passes and low passes while adding a delay. Now let's try some of the others. This is the noise. Which adds a filter and a noise sweep which can be really nice for building up tracks as well. And then the fourth and final effect is the time gate. And again, this also works with low pass.
Now, not all changes in Tract Pro 3, as far I, as I understand, are visible from the UI. For example, there's a brand new uh, developed sound engine. I think they even built it from the ground up, but I'm not sure about that. Um, and I think it sounds a lot better. There's a new time stretching algorithm, uh, which is sounding quite a lot better than the old one. Um, and if you're a Tractor Scratch user, you now get Tractor Scratch included in Tractor Pro. So no need for a se uh, separate license. So the last feature I want to talk to you about is the addition of the reverse feature. We've had this for ages on the CDJs, I think even as early from the uh, first generation of CDJs 1000. Uh, and now we finally have it in Tractor. So it sounds as you would expect. With the addition of one nice little feature, which is that you can activate the reverse and the flux motors at the same time. So the track will follow its position even though you're hearing the reverse track. Let me demonstrate what I mean. As soon as I activate the reverse, you see the green stripe moving forward, which is where the track would have been hadn't we activated the reverse feature. And as soon as we let go of the reverse feature, we snap back to the position we would have been if we would have kept on playing. Also, you can use the reverse feature as you would expect normally with a reverse feature without the flux mode activated. Let's see what we can do with the reverse feature if we combine it with the reverse effect. It's so easy to create a small breakdown just by combining the mixer effects with the reverse effects. And that's because the mixer effects are not actually one effect. It's a combination of the filter and the effect, which I would normally have to, you know, do on the mixer, maybe map to the controller. Now I can just use one button to create a nice breakdown. And there we go. Thank you so much for watching. This is the first time I'm doing one of these videos. And if you like it, please let me know in the comments and I'll be seeing you guys soon.